Why, hello there everybody, in this video we're going to create a countdown timer program using Java. This is meant to serve as more of a mini project, to get us used to working with timer tasks. Let's begin. We'll accept user input, but we're going to set that up near the end. It's going to be easier for us to understand this program at first, if we set the countdown timer to be a raw number, like 10. To work with timer tasks, we'll need a timer to keep track of the time. Timer, timer, equals new, timer. We'll be importing our classes as we go along, be sure to do that. Import them from the Java utility package. Then we'll need a timer task. Timer task, I'll name this task for short, equals new timer task. Be sure to import this class. Now there's one issue though. With our timer task object, we have to override the run method. One option, although it's not the best, is to create a new class and then inherit from the timer task class. So this would be the parent class, and then we can override the run method. But since we don't plan on reusing that class, what we could do instead is use an anonymous class. After the set of parentheses, add a set of curly braces, then add that semicolon to the end. For a one-time use, we can override the run method of our timer task object, because we only plan on using it once, so we can write an anonymous class rather than create a whole new class that we're only going to use once. So we will override the run method, public void run. When our timer executes our task, what would we like to do? Well, we're going to output a number, the number for our countdown timer. So within our anonymous class, let's create an integer variable of count. For the time being, let's set this to a low number like five. IntelliJ wants us to make this variable final, but we'll be accepting user input momentarily, so you don't need to do that. My IDE of IntelliJ is recommending that. You can just ignore that. So let's say that our count is going to start at 5, and we'll decrement by 1, then display Happy New Year, when count is 0. So why don't we do the following? Within our run method, we'll output our count variable. At first, it's going to be 5. Then we'll decrement count by 1, count minus minus. We'll need to escape the run method. Well, we can do that with an if statement. We will check if our count is less than 0. If it is, let's output Happy New Year. And then to stop our timer, we'll take our timer object, call the cancel method. Now we have to set up our timer. We will do that outside the timer task anonymous class. So right here is good. We will take our timer, call the schedule method. Schedule will take a task, our timer task, and execute it after a delay. Let's set the delay to be zero. Now this is only going to run once. There's a better method for this. Let me just demonstrate. So we get the number five and our program stops. So what we're going to use instead is schedule at fixed rate, the schedule at fixed rate method. But there's three arguments we have to pass in. First is the task, the delay, and then the period. We have our task, the delay is zero. What is the period in between executions? Let's set that to be 1000 milliseconds. Every one second, 1,000 milliseconds, perform your task. And our task is to display our countdown, whatever the count currently is. All right, let's test this. Again, we're setting our count to be 5 initially, but we'll be accepting user input momentarily. We start at 5, and we're going to count down to 0, then display Happy New Year. All right, after 0, we display Happy New Year, and our program exits because we canceled the timer. Now, if we don't cancel the timer, I'm just going to cut this momentarily. It's going to continue forever. We keep on displaying Happy New Year, and we're going into negative seconds. So that's why we need to cancel the timer, so that it stops. All right, now we'll accept user input because we want a user to type in the number to count down from, rather than us programmers just typing in a random number. So we will need a scanner. 
scanner scanner equals new scanner. Then pass in system.in, import this class, and then we'll need a prompt. Let's output the following. Enter number of seconds to count down from. I'll use print rather than print line. Let's create an integer variable of response. Set that equal to use our scanner call the next int method to get the next integer from the user. Then we will set our count variable equal to the response, whatever the user types in. So now the user can type in a number and we can count down from that number rather than just placing a random number here. All right, let's test this. Enter number of seconds to count down from. Let's say 10. We're going to count down from 10. So we start at 10 and we're going to count down to zero. Zero, happy new year, and then the program exits. So you can type in any number. You could even set this to a higher number like 60. But I'm not going to make you wait that long. All right, everybody, that is a countdown timer program that you can write as a mini project using Java.